Hey everybody, it's Al with Bobcat. So I wanted to talk about uh, adaptive pocketing, uh, similar to what we have in this example here, just a little bit different and some ways that you can approach it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of these two features. And instead of having a uh, just a straight wall uh, pocket here, what we're going to do is we're going to add some fillets. That's right, we're going to put some fillets on the bottom. So I'm going to select these faces here and I'm going to hit my space bar. So let's say you have some pocketing and you have a radius down in the bottom like this. How are you going to approach this? Now if you use a regular pocket, you're going to blow out the radius. If you use a ball mill, then you're probably going to have some wasted uh, cut time or not the most efficient way to do it. So what can you do? Well, we have an option for you and uh, let's go ahead and take a look at it. I'm going to select the whole model here and then my boundary, I'm just going to do one of these for now. So I'm going to pick a boundary here and then the strategy that I'm going to use is called Advanced Rough. This is available in the Mill Professional software. I'll use the same uh, uh, end mill that I used before. Okay, uh, We're going to do adaptive just like we did before. Uh, depth of cut. Now the pocket depth is 750, so I'm going to make the depth of cut 750, and then um, we'll make it a 50% step over. Okay. Now one of the things that I'm going to do as well is I'm going to go to my uh, allowance, and I'm going to use a side and bottom allowance. So I'm going to leave 15 on the on the wall, but I'm I'm going to finish the floor. All right. So so far all of this looks pretty good. Let me drop this tolerance down. All right, so let's go ahead and add a ramp in there. That looks good. And let's compute this. So now what's going to happen is we get our pocket routine here, but you can see that it, because we're, we're trying to avoid this radius, we're actually going to end up leaving quite a bit of material on the wall. Let's run this through a simulation. And let's look at, let's look at how much we're actually how much material we end up uh, having left over. So it goes down and it pockets this out. So I mean even even right there we can tell that there's quite a bit of material. Let's hide that. Let's look at um, let's look at this. Let's do deviation. Recalculate. This will take a second to figure out what's going on, and you can see in the blue. I mean, we got we have a ton, we have a ton of material here on the wall. Okay, so what are some other options that we can do? Well, one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to come back to our intermediate slices. And, and what this does is we're at a 750 step down. Whatever number we put here will break up the increment on 750. In this case, I'm going to do like 10, uh, 10 intermediate steps, and I'm going to go ahead and recompute this. So what this is going to do is it's going to pocket down to the bottom, but then it's also going to uh, start roughing that radius in. And that's what you see here is you see these extra passes to come in here and to rough that radius in. Okay, so we spiral down to the bottom, then we start stepping up, and um, yeah, we'll go ahead and simulate that. So that's going to start removing uh, some of the material on the wall. Let's run this through again. And then uh, from there, we can use our profile with uh, side roughing. And we can take a couple of passes to right away. You can see that we've cleared a lot more material. We'll run our same same uh, deviation. Let's run the same deviation and uh, we'll give it a second. And we'll see that uh, we, we were able to clear a lot more material off that wall by using that step up uh, or intermediate steps. So now, see, we're in the light blue now. So now what we want to do is we want to come back in here and we want to profile some more uh, to, with our ball mill. We're going to side rough and then, uh, then we'll run a, a finish pass to finish it out. Okay, so one of the tricks here, we're going to go to mill to axis and select geometry. Now, 
you want to select the outside wall because the tool, the profile is going to offset for half the cutter, and we're going to use the same. Uh, we're using a half inch uh, ball mill because we have a quarter inch radius down here. Okay, so we're going to right click on this edge and choose constant Z, and then we'll hit space bar to lock it in. Uh, from here, pick bottom. You know, we know that it's 750, but we can pick it up. Okay, we're going to do profile rough, profile finish. Uh, profile rough, we're going to use a half inch uh, ball mill. We're going to do side roughing. We're going to say there's a hundred thou of material and we want to take it in three passes. Um, the other thing we want to do is a lead in and out. So we'll do circular. I'm just going to drop this down a little bit. All right. And we'll apply that to the finish pass as well. And then for the finish pass, we're going to use uh, a ball mill too. And this all looks good, and that looks good, and that looks good. All right, so we're all set. All we need to do is just pick our start point, which we're going to make in the middle here, space bar, and then we'll compute the side roughing, and then we'll compute the finish pass. Now, I'm going to go ahead and blank out the advanced rough so we can see that we have our side rough where it's stepping in. And then we have our finish pass. Let me blank the side rough out. Then we have our finish pass, and that's going to clean up the wall. Okay. So using the advanced rough uh, and the intermediate steps, we can rough in, uh, we can finish the floor, uh, we can rough the radius on the bottom, and then from there, we can use our profile with side roughing. And uh, let me just turn that off and play that and bring this back up. So we can use our profile with side roughing to come in there and rough the wall and then finish the wall. And that's what we're looking at here. And I think it's done actually a really good job. Let's run our deviation. And uh, we should be should come up roses, should come up looking good. Now, uh, so again, this is just one way to do this. We could have done this with pocketing as well, but if we did it with pocketing, uh, we would have needed to set multiple levels for the pocket and offset for the pocket, which is a, a little little more cumbersome. Um, you know, but uh, this this method I feel is a great way. So if you're a standard user, you can do it with pocketing. You just have to create pockets uh, and and change your boundary a little bit. Uh, if you're a pro user, uh, you can use the advanced rough. And because you're using the profile uh, to finish, you you have cutter comp, so you can use cutter comp on the wall. Now again, I applied this to this one boundary here. It was to this whole model to the one boundary. If I want to apply it to all of them, all I need to do is select the additional boundaries so I can include that with that tool path okay and with this one here I would do the same thing I'm just gonna select the additional boundaries so I have this one here lock that in change my start point so I want to make sure that they're all in the same position and going the correct direction I'll uh, compute my finishing first so that's done and then I'll compute my roughing and uh, really it's just that simple so if you guys have any questions comments or feedback uh, please reply back to the Facebook the YouTube or whatever thread this video may be posted in uh, if you like the video let's get a thumbs up you can also comment uh, in the video below uh, if there's any topics that you want to see covered just uh, send me a message uh, it'd be great or you can call me 877-262-2231 I'm at extension 147 I'd love to hear from you um, if there's anything else uh, that I can think of. Nope. All right, guys. Have a great weekend. Talk to you later. Bye now.